I'm Dave Spencer. Welcome to Gardening with Bugs. On today's segment, we're going to talk about Stradiolalaps schematis. This is a beneficial predatory mite that goes into the soil. Uh, I got lots of questions this time of year, late January, about uh, seeding schedules, what to seed, what planting depth, what kind of soil media you use. Um, you know, while those are pretty common questions, they're usually answered with straightforward answers. I don't need to spend a lot of time on that. And most of you growers already have your technique and your preferred potting soil anyways. Um, but I will touch on it just quickly to show you what we do anyways. Uh, but really what I want to talk about is adding predatory mites to that soil, the soil that you're going to be seeding with in order to get you prevention of a bunch of pests that are going to cause you problem in the spring. So as you can see, the sun's shining today. It's actually only three degrees Celsius. Um, so it is relatively cold, uh, but the garden's alive. We've been above freezing for a couple weeks now, even at night, and you'll see there's leaf hoppers kicking around, the odd midges flying around. Uh, really, the garden's come to life. So there's no reason not to start working right now. And as I talk about this, pr this predatory mite, Stradiolalaps schematis, um, I will mention that there is really no bad time to, to use it. It basically does everything nematodes do. Everyone's familiar with nematodes. Um, but the big difference for us is nematodes, especially here in BC, they have a window where you can apply it outside of like one or two weeks where the humidity and moisture level and temperature matches up. Uh, Stradiolalaps, it's a living mite, it's native. Uh, you can just dump it in anytime. Uh, the only time we'd suggest avoiding it is like peak sunshine, midday where the soil's baking hot uh, or the ground's frozen. Otherwise, they're just gonna move wherever they need to. But let's start off by talking about seeding. So here's what I do. First of all, grab your bag of, of potting mix. I sometimes use my own compost. Uh, rarely do I use my own soil, but that's really just total laziness. Uh, there's no reason not to take soil out of your ground, uh, especially here where it's like pretty rich uh, clay-based soil and just mix it with a bit of compost and off you go. Yes, it's got bad things in it. It's also got good things in it. And in this case, it would actually help with the application of predatory mites because you're giving them food right off the bat. Um, but let's just start off with the generic potting soil. And I'm, I'm not picky. I'll get miracle Grow, even though some people are against that sort of uh, that brand for some reason. They're basically all the same. Um, there's one thing you really got to be conscious about though. And they're all peat based mostly. Uh, at least the big brand ones and um, peat if you've ever worked with dry peat it's impossible to get it wet again uh, it could take hours it could take days even um, so what the commercial brands do is they add a wetting agent in there which which allows water to get in there right away now i know from a commercial growing point of view that the msds or material safety data sheets that come with some of these commercial soils especially in, in uh, big commercial volumes they list um, the wetting agent, but they don't tell you what it is for proprietary reasons, but they do ask you to handle with gloves. So be conscious that there are some chemicals in there that uh, aren't necessarily disclosed. Otherwise, you know, miracle Grow has just got fertilizers, usually very, very water soluble ones that are gonna uh, take up nutrients quite quickly. My point is just be safe with the commercial ones, uh, but use whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. So what we've got here is the uh, just some Miracle Gore, just a generic peat-based uh, media. So it's got some perlite in there for um, for aeration as well as drainage. Uh, the important thing here is just to mix it up and get it wet first. Uh, if you stuff it into these plugs uh, before doing that, what you're going to do is you're going to add water and get the top inch wet. It's going to absorb a lot of water. It's going to take you a long time and a lot of effort to get that water all the way down. So instead, throw it in the bucket like this, uh, mix it up. Uh, let it sit just for a sec. You basically want, well, first of all, grab the enough soil that you're going to use. Um, it will swell a little bit. So if you wanted to like grab your container, uh, fill it with soil and then dump that out into a bucket to wet it, you'd probably find you need about two thirds of that volume. Um, so give it a, give it a little wetting there and then start packing it in. You don't, definitely don't want to pack it too tight. 
Um, air is obviously important for the root development. Um, just generally, I mean, we could talk days about soil compaction as being probably the number one thing that restricts people's growing uh, or the size of their plants anyways. Um, but yeah, just kind of shake it in here, fill the edges. I just use a straight edge like this just to kind of push it around. Um, notice that the tray here is in a container so that all the soil that gets pushed off, I can just quickly reuse it. Uh, what I find most difficult, of course, is I dump it right in the middle here. So you got to get it out and around the edges. And that's it. Tap it down maybe. Um, add a little bit, touch it up. You also usually, depending on what kind of seed you're dealing with, but you usually want uh, a little bit of an imprint, which I usually just poke with my finger just so it kind of falls dead center. Um, again, kind of depends what it is. In terms of soil uh, depth for seeding, I, you know, every plant's specific, but I found the advice of Salt Spring Island Seed Company uh, really helpful. It was sort of by accident, I think, because they don't spend a lot of money on the uh, seed packages. They kind of reuse them. So instead of giving you a seed depth for every single uh, one that's separate, a lot of the seed packages kind of grouped into families. And if you look on their website, what they recommend is, is and they say, generally speaking, the seed size determines how deep it goes. So the bigger the, si the seed, the deeper it goes. And you think of how true that really is. Of, of course, there's, there's some objections there, but... Um, like consider something like a pumpkin seed. So in nature, that, that fruit sitting on the ground, um, it's rock hard to keep bugs out in the fall. And then after it freezes, it starts to thaw and uh, break down and become the compost that it needs, super rich compost in order to grow the next plant. Uh, and because there's so much fruiting material there, those seeds end up quite deep into the soil, relatively speaking. Um, Conversely, if you think of something like um, the carrot family, a uh, very tall, very small, um, very lightweight seeds, those tend to be kind of wind driven. Uh, so something like that, it, we don't really know where it's going to fall, right? It might fall into a bit of bare space. It might fall into some already fallen leaves. Uh, regardless, when it grows, it's, it's not expecting to be that deep into the soil. Um, I usually give it a bit of a sprinkle of water on top and that really just helps to set the seeds and make contact. Um, what you risk is like little bits or little clumps of soil um, that are kind of sheltering the seed. It won't get the same kind of contact and it can dry out a little bit quicker. Probably not the case in January, but um, definitely as, as spring goes along, that's something I'm going to watch out for. Uh, so give it a little bit of water, kind of get them settled there. But from that point on, I'll rarely overhead water. Uh, there's a bit of a trick here. If you overhead water, you're going to get more fungus gnats and stuff like that, and that's because the top will stay quite wet. You'll always need to be kind of playing catch up to get the water down through the bottom. Uh, so you tend to get a little bit more molds and, and uh, stuff like that on the, on the surface. Um, what I like to do is, is bottom water, but you can actually run to the same problem. If you add too much water below it, um, especially if you kind of bring it up to the, to the, to the height of the plug, what you'll do is saturate it and compact the soil again. So what I find is absolutely best is a little bit of water. It takes a bit more patience, but a little bit of water at the bottom and allows the soil to kind of draw up what it needs. Uh, that way, it's not really changing the structure of the soil very much. It is getting wet and through the bottom where you kind of want to drive the root development anyways. Uh, and you just run into a little, a little less problems that way. So it comes time to apply stradiolalaps to these seedlings and it, is, it couldn't be more straightforward. Uh, you can buy a liter of stratolalops like this. Um, it might run you maybe 50 bucks. Uh, there's 25,000 mites in here. Actually, there's way more than that, but that's sort of the minimum count. Uh, that will cover 1,000 square feet. So I could use, mo I could do most of my farm that way as a kind of a preventative um, application, or at least I need maybe two bags, two or three bags. But um, in this case, we're, we're talking about just a tiny amount. So either wait have a, wait till you have a whole bunch of of trays of plants um then buy this leader apply it to those seed plants take it inside put it in your indoor plants where it's where it's fine going to really control fungus gnats and then throw the rest in some of your outdoor potted plants or or raised gardens wherever you want anywhere put them on your lawn uh, you could do that or on amazon under the brand name grub grenade you can get really small packages which is usually what uh, what indoor plant growers or even just small time backyard gardeners will use. Yeah, so open the bag, um, inspect its contents. You should be applying this as soon as you get it. There's no shelf life for living animals in a bag. 
Um, that's really uh, the drawback of the industry is that you can't just put these on the shelf at a, at a nursery. Nurseries have to have some sort of um, some sort of program where you order it and then you come pick it up a week later than, or the next day or something like that. Um, so get them out there right away. Again, it doesn't really matter what the temperature is outside, uh, but acclimatization does matter. If you're going to take this from inside at 20 degrees Celsius and then dump it out here in the ground at three, uh, you're going to shock them doesn't mean that's going to kill them necessarily but uh it's not going to help them and they're going to want to, especially like this late afternoon on a, on a fairly cool day um they're going to want to work their way into the soil pretty quick to get down to a place where they're not going to freeze or get too cold themselves so acclimatize and that actually goes for almost all beneficial insects uh, acclimatize slowly uh too quick you can cause condensation in the bags uh, either too quick cooling or or heating up it's sort of that change in temperature that that causes problems for it so uh, it's as easy as maybe just putting it in the shed while you prepare it, uh, give it an hour or so, bring it out and sprinkle it. So what I'm going to do here is just with my hand, because it is just simple things, like there's a bit of bran and vermiculite in this mixture. Um, doesn't matter, it's all organic. Uh, so I can just grab it, hand broadcast like this over my trays. And that's it. Those mites, they're super light. They're as light as the little specks of dust. So they're just going to settle where they are. They are soil mites, they will go into the soil. There's no problem with them. Like the ones that might land around the pot and stuff like that, they're just gonna go down into the soil anyways. So a place like this greenhouse, perfect application. Anything that I miss goes to the ground, it's fine. It's going down there that's gonna eat fungus gnats and spider mites, anything that might be living in there right now. So you're never, you're never wasting these guys. Uh, and then take the rest outside. I'll always put a bit in my uh, house plants, always a tiny bit. Uh, house plants get fungus gnats regularly um, especially this time of year I find in the winter where uh, the humidity in the house is so low so you tend to be compensating with a bit more watering like more frequent watering anyways not necessarily more water um, and that really kind of benefits the the fungus gnats and if you add too much of these predatory mites in there what will happen is they will eat all of the larva uh, they'll even team up and eat some of the larger ones uh, but then they'll just starve to death um, of course they'll eat all sorts of other little bugs that you've got in the soil uh, but you're basically like giving them an unnatural amount of predators so they'll eventually starve to death and die they will not leave the pot don't worry they're not going to crawl around your house again they have to stay in the soil um, but the best so the best way to to really apply this is to add a tiny amount you, you have to have a bit of patience because of course, if you want to wipe them out and that's totally fine, you can just dump a whole bunch on there and they will do the job quite quickly, but you will have to reapply them. Uh, the best case is just being preventative again. Use a tiny amount, let them eat, lay eggs, let those eggs develop, let their population kind of balance. And then you might have the odd fungus gnat forever. It'll never be a problem. The idea of prevention is something that we use here at Full Circle Farm. Uh, there's no point in adding a whole ton of bugs at a huge cost later on. Like, I'm not going to wait for aphids to be killing a plant before I start applying aphid predators. You have to trust that this time of year the garden's alive, the, pre the pests are already here. Uh, it's time to use a small amount of corrective measures that's going to give you that, that balance of predation that you want in the garden for a successful year going forward. But really the nice thing about applying Stradivillaps to the plugs is those plugs, when I put them into whatever the next pot size is, the four inch pots, uh, they'll go with it. Uh, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna really aggressively transplant by pulling them out, uh, out of the soil and putting them into the new soil. I'm just gonna like take that little plug out, put it into a four inch, maybe the four inch if it's a hot crop might go into a one gallon pot or, or something bigger. That whole time, that small amount of strategy laid up so I added at the beginning, will be feeding on things, multiplying, filling that, that pot um, with the predators. And then when I put it out in the garden, I'm gonna have the strategy laid up in the garden as well. So I don't really feel the need to reapply because I'm already gonna be putting these bugs all over the place every year anyways. Okay, that's it for this segment of Gardening with Bugs. Hopefully you've learned that Stradiolalaps is gonna save you a lot of headaches later on in the gardening season. So make sure that all your seeding is, is dealt with with Stradiolalaps, any plants that you bring in, even if you're buying them from the nursery, uh, throw some Stradiolalaps on them, or at least inquire if they already have. Uh, so follow if you want some more content like this, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.